Hi, I'm Dana Blickensurfer with Provoke Art, and we are at Scope um, during Miami Art Week, and I'm with Nicole Sharp from Long Sharp Gallery. Tell me a little bit about your gallery. Um, we Most of what we do is actually Picasso to Warhol, so Picasso to American Pop. Wonderful. Um, so we're exhibiting at two places this year, Art Miami, where we're doing Picasso, Warhol, Liechtenstein, etc., and uh, here we have more of our contemporary artists like Chris Bracey, Jason Myers, David Spiller, all the people that I love. And where the, where's your location of the gallery? Uh, the gallery is located in Indianapolis, Indiana. Wow. Because where else would you put an art gallery? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Well, we're going to take a look around and uh, thank you for having us. You're so welcome. Bye. Thank you for being here. Been participating in Scope. Um, we've done Scope for three years, and the Mi and Miami during Art Basel for four. So we did Scope 2012, 2014, and 15, and then in 2013 we did uh, an exhibit in the Design District with the Warhol Museum. Wonderful. Yeah, so we're back at Scope this year, and at Art Miami as well. <laughs> Who are the artists that you're representing at Scope and Art Miami? Okay, so at Scope we brought an exhibit called Text, which explores uh, text throughout the past few decades. Starting with Robert Indiana, uh, we're also featuring three British artists: Chris Bracey, who worked in Neon, or worked in Neon, he passed away in 2014; uh, David Spiller, who is one of the grandfathers of British pop art and works in works on canvas mainly; and Wayne Warren, who is a multimedia artist, also British, and we have uh, one of his great friends here with us. We're also uh, featuring many awesome works by Jason Myers. Jason Myers is a mixed media artist based in Indiana, which really shocks people because he does really, really intensive digital digital works and works with resin that are that are amazing. We're also working with David Kramer. He is based in uh, Brooklyn, in New York. He's all in, he's into satire and comedy, and uh, he said that if a piece doesn't make him laugh by the time he's done with it, he physically throws it out and starts again. Really? Yes, he does. That's <laughs> wild. Yeah, but his pieces are great. We're also working with uh, two new artists in the last six months with Edward Holland, who works in paintings on campus. He's based in New York as well. And we're featuring Aram Burkhart in this exhibit. Um, and he works with Techscape. So a lot of there are sort of geometrical pieces that also spell out words. The last artist that we are featuring is Gino Miles. He's a sculptor based out of Santa Fe, New Mexico. He works in bronze and marine grade stainless steel and um, creates a wide variety of pieces, many of which are kinetic and will spin on their base. Um, art, and Art Miami's roster is similar to a certain extent. Gino Miles, Chris Bracey, and David Spiller are featured over there as well. But um, that's where we have our Picasso drawings, Lichtenstein drawings, Warhol paintings. It's more of like the old masters as well. How do you feel about the, um, there's a lot of interest with text. What are your thoughts on, on work like that? Because you said most of this is a text-based yes. show. Almost every every piece in the show will have some text in it. Um, whether that's paintings with the words written across them, neon where it is that three-dimensional, or we have Morse code sculptures by Gino Miles. He talks a lot about you know the, the language of sculpture and you know what that means to him. We like to have works that are diverse, um, and I also think it's important to put to put a sort of three-dimensional texture into a show. I think it gives it something that that pops, that isn't just works on the wall. Yeah. Um, I'm also a sculpture fanatic, so that's probably some of it. If you're going to stand in a booth for many hours, bring art that you like. Yes, yeah, true. Um, but we, we like to have a variety, it's, and it's and people like to see a variety, at least that we've seen so far. How is the interaction between the viewer and the artwork that you find, like people coming through, have they said stuff to you, do they come back? Sure. Um, it's like three full days, so. It's many full days. Many full days. <laughs> it's many full days. Um, the interaction between the people who have visited and the art has been really great this year. The, the clientele base is, is very, very broad. Um, and it seems like they sort of come in waves. Like in the mornings you get a different demographic than in the afternoons and the evenings. People come back for four artists in particular. They come back to see Gino Miles' pieces. They come back to see Chris Bracey's neon, David Spiller's paintings because they're probably the happiest paintings on earth. And they come back to see Jason Myers. Jason Myers has been a really big uh, hit here this year. We've had a couple people who have come in and said, 
You featured for by this artist in 2014. I loved him. Wow. I'm so glad you're exhibiting him. And they like wow, bring their they friends remember. in. Wow. They remember him by name. Wow. Which That's is huge. It's not like, hey, this one guy. If they're like Jason Myers, I remember you. And then they bring back their friends. You know, it's, it, which which is really good. That's very positive. Um, yeah. The word of the word of mouth this year has been has been very impressive. The amount of people who have just heard about the fair or heard about us or really Jason and Gino. Yeah. Um, and Gracie and Stiller. And and let me know where's your tell me about your gallery. Where is it located? And sure. So the gallery is in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, sometimes we call it the art mecca of the world to throw people <laughs> off. Yeah, and, uh, clever. <laughs> um, so we, most of what we do at the gallery is Picasso to American Pop. So Picasso, Warhol, Lichtenstein, Herring, um, some of the old names, Miro. Um, and then we also deal with a stable of contemporary artists, which are the artists that we're featuring at Scope. So Gracie, Spiller, etc. We have a, a gallery space in downtown Indianapolis on the busiest street corner in Indianapolis. We exhibit in at least three places every year, Miami, New York, and London. So we, you know, we've got a pretty broad range of places that we what, go. Uh, which, which one in New York? We, uh, this past year we did Spring Masters New York for the first time and found it to be a very good fair. And then in Masterpiece we go to Masterpiece London every summer. Coming from a, an exhibitor, gallery owner perspective, what like perspectives can you give others seeking to do this for their own gallery? Looking in Miami specifically during Miami Art Week, what three things that from your experience that you could give us? The the biggest thing for someone who has never exhibited here or you know anywhere before is to do your research. Okay. Um, we did a lot of research about Basel Week, you know, five or six years ago before we were looking at, or probably, probably way before that. Um, it has to have been maybe even eight years ago when we were thinking about, you know, trying out new places. So, it's, you know, we looked at the galleries who had exhibited at the fairs we were looking at in years prior. We looked at the artists that were featured. We looked at, you know, what we could ascertain to be the general vibe and to see if that vibe, you know, fit well with ours. So doing research before you go is maybe, Huge. maybe like, like, common sense but there are people who go oh I didn't expect to see contemporary art at scope and I you, you just and it's surprised you know yeah. so people are surprised something that we do and have done for a very long time is uh, we keep a closet we build a closet every time we design our space that has uh, collateral about the artists and extra art which isn't something that was done I don't think until a couple of years ago and then people started doing it so you know, everyone goes to an art fair with the hope that the pieces that they bring will be well received and ideally sell. Um, and uh, something to be prepared for is when they do sell, what are you going to do? Some people leave them up with red dots and that's cool. Like it shows people that, you know, you're selling things and that's great. We do not really do that. We, um, we bring extra art, like more than we have designed in our exhibit. And we take out the pieces that have sold and then we put in new ones. Can you tell me what angle you go for, or is it more to lure in the audience, or is it more to comp, uh, do the dialogue between the artists? What is more important in your perspective? We are we are very 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 artist centric, okay. which it sounds again it sounds like a very common sense thing, but we try to we try to we bring the artists down here for a reason. So we want everyone to get their space. Um, you'll see out there we probably have eight of the nine artists on exhibit out there right now mm -hmm. um, because you know th their pieces are wonderful and people like to see variety and the artists like to know that their pieces are being shown to a real audience mm -hmm. um, so do you you don't so much worry about the curation like th that could be a lot of pressure the curation part the curation part I mean w once we know the artists that we're bringing it's, it's sitting down with the booth diagram and figuring out you know do we want to put in extra walls where are we going to have electric? Because we do a lot of mixed media pieces, right. um, and so and you got to figure out how the works will play with each other, which is which is very difficult to do in a vacuum. So sometimes we actually build with cardboard or styrofoam. Like we will build a mock-up of the booth wow. and print out tiny little pictures. That's, uh, see, that's an, it's like an architect. It's sort of like being an architect. Yeah. It's, it's more like an elementary school architect. So I mean, so that that is a really big thing, and we do a lot of work with with from that particular perspective and planning out the size of the booth we, we try to go 
most of our spaces are relatively large in comparison because we like things to be very plain. Yeah. Like you won't see many walls with more than one piece of art on them, um, unless it's like you know the Robert Indiana suite. But we try to be very clean. We try to let the artist's work stand out, and it's it's, it's a lot easier to do that when you can when you can see it in even even in a small model. So we really do a lot of that. I mean, the other part is, of course, we want to bring people into the booth. Yeah. Um, so we ha we'll have a mixed media artist, or mi like a mixed media piece where people can see it, a neon piece, because that's really big in Miami. Um, Gino's pieces bring in a, um, a really, like, a broad spectrum mm -hmm. of viewers just because they move. Yeah. So, you know, we'll go out and clean them, and we'll kind of spin them, because you, you it's easier than walking around in circles, and people are like, oh my goodness, yeah, it moves. Because you know these these pieces are eight feet tall. Yeah, they're um they don't they don't look like they should be interactive. And we try to bring collateral about the artist, like some something to take away about each one individually, because people don't want to carry a lot. I mean, like this year, people are more like taking pictures of the business cards and taking pictures of the tags, which has been very strange. You know, it's, it's nice for people to have something, especially like the younger crowd and the older crowd. There's that middle, the, my generation that doesn't really take things, but it's nice to have a takeaway, something that they can bring home and research. We have a picture on the front and the artist bio on the back and our website, um, so they can do future research on their own. That's wonderful. Um, what what's the, what's the website where we can find your beautiful artists and your your website for your gallery? Sure, the website is www.longsharpgallery.com. Longsharp Just like it's gallery.com. Perfect. Well, I wish you the best. I hope you saw everything. Thank and, you. Uh, I need a full report, and I'm coming to see your gallery. Yay! I've never been over there. So. To Indiana? I've never been. Maybe come in like the spring. Okay, or I'll the fall. wait. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.